Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Crazy Bees Urban Farming. So glad to see you all again today. And today, I actually have a late start, so I'm really excited to be doing this video. It's going to be a little bit more detailed, so I wanted to have the time to be able to go over things. As you can see, I have onions in front of me. Today, we are going to go over all of the things that pertain to onions because when I started my onions there were so many things I didn't know and it's been a couple years now and we're going to go outside here in a minute and I'm going to show you a couple of more mistakes that I have made and I've done a ton of research and I want to give you a head start so that you don't make the mistakes that I made and you are able to get the production from your onions that you're looking for when you put all that time and energy into them because they do take a while to grow. So if you're spending all that time and energy on them, you want to get a good harvest. And I may not get another good harvest this year. We'll have to see. Uh, I'm going to do everything that I can to try to remedy the mistakes that I made and hopefully I will get a good harvest, but we'll have to see. So we're going to take a walk outside. I'm going to show you what I got going on out there and then I am going to take you through the steps of before you even plant your onions, what to do with your soil and uh, the type of onions that you want to get that was a big one that I didn't know um, and that's huge and the watering of your onions the planting of your onions harvesting them what to do with them after you harvest them um, the curing process and then the storing process so let's uh, grab our coffee and take a walk outside and we'll see what we got going on I wanted to do a tutorial on our gardening video this week. As you know, we have our onions in here. We did the Walla Wallas. These are the leeks. Oh, excuse me. These are the sweet Spanish. These are the leeks. These are the Walla Wallas. These are more of the Walla Wallas. And I can't remember what I put in this one. For some reason, the tag is gone. So I guess we're going to find out. But one thing I learned is you're supposed to have these probably about six inches apart. I am doing a more high density planting to see if it works. And what I'm doing right now is what they call spooning. I am taking this onion and I am going around it until I get down to the root ball. See where you can just start seeing those roots right there? Right before that. So then this bulb, it gives that bulb a chance to start getting bigger without having to fight the dirt that's around it. So we're going to do this. With all of these. And another thing that I can do if I need to, which I don't know that I'm going to need to because the rats have gotten in here and chewed off some of my tops. But if your uh, onion tops start getting too heavy early in the season, you can top them. You know, you can, you can take this and you can cut it off. But you don't want to do that unless you have to because this is what helps the bulb to grow by photosynthesis. So these smaller ones I don't think I'm going to um, do yet because I feel like they need... 
a little bit more time to get their roots going. See how deep some of these are? So they're really having to fight to And then we'll look back at this video after they start bulbing up and see how long it took to start bulbing up once we removed some of this dirt. So I'll get this one done today. It's starting to get dark outside. I was working this morning, so we came home and had to do a little bit of redoing on the chicken coop today moving things around because we had put those boards up there for perches so they had more air uh, height in their run and they kept pooping on the top of their feeder which it's a closed feeder so it's not going to hurt it any but it just makes it messy because I take the feeders in every night so that the rats don't get into them because you know there's a lot of places where you just there are vermins everywhere. In town, in the country, in the city. Suburban, urban, rural. Out here you have the desert rats and in town you have the roof, they call them roof rats. I'll take the desert rats. I don't want nothing climbing around on my roof. So I'll get this done and show you what it looks like when I'm finished with this one. Okay, here we go. We've got this planter right here done. So, so far, the biggest one is this one right here. Look at those. I think that'll be a nice bulb if this turns out the way it's supposed to. But see, I just, I, I think it's kind of weird because, you know, then they're like, but the root is still in the ground and that's how it grows. So as your onions grow bigger, you know, the, the tops are above the ground. So uh, just like with turnips and any other root crops. So I took quite a bit of dirt out of here. I took a, well, this is how full it was and this is where it's at now. So I took quite a bit out. So we'll see in the days ahead what, what follows and we'll keep, it, keep you updated on that. We are now out in the onion bed and I want to show you a few things that we are talking about. So I had attached a previous video on what I call spooning. What is called spooning. What you're doing is you're taking that soil. I did this a couple weeks ago. So you're just taking that soil and moving it away from the bulb of your onion so it can keep growing without having to push through the soil. Okay, another thing that we talked about today, see you don't want to show the roots of it, but you want the bulb to be sticking out of the soil. So you can see how these guys are starting to go up. Now these were the sweet spanishes. These here are the leeks and the bunching onions. But you can see, I, think I had some walla wallas in here too. How these onions are getting nice and big right here. Okay. It's just giving them more of an opportunity to be able to bulb up. Now these are the walla wallas. You can see how small they are right now and I believe that's because they're not getting enough uh, sunlight for the right zone and we're showing some root here so we want to cover that up you don't want the roots to be showing that can burn them up okay like right here you can see that that's showing a little bit of root so I'm going to take a little bit of soil and this one here this poor little guy 
this is a great example of how to plant your onions. So I'm gonna actually pull him out. We'll just eat him for dinner. You see how this is what they're going to look like when they come to you as starts. You're going to want to plant that full root and about that much of that bulb in the ground. And that's all the further you want to go with that. So I'm gonna stick that in there. And you wanna cover it, just like that. That's all the further you wanna go. Now, when you do that, they're gonna lay over and that's okay. Once they get established, they will stand back up again. And here's some more of our Walla Wallas in here. So now, if you have an onion, say this guy right here, he was like, I'm about this, so we're talking about this tall. You would want to take this right here and you want to cut no more than, you know, you want to leave a fair amount of green on this onion. So don't go any shorter than this right here. And that's called topping. You want to do this so that for one, more of the energy can be put into the bulb and two, so this doesn't bend over and those nutrients are no longer getting to the onion, which is going to make it so that your bulb's not getting all the nutrients that it needs to keep growing. So those are the things that you want to keep an eye on when you are growing your onions, when they are, when they are bulbing up. The other thing, I don't have any in here, which is great, is you wanna make sure that there's no weed pressure in here. If you are seeing weed pressure in with your onions, you need to pick them immediately because the weeds will take the nutrients away from your onions. So make sure that your soil is has moisture in it. You know, put your finger, put your finger in that soil, you know, at least to your knuckle right there. And make sure that you've got uh, a nice moist soil, but not, not soaking wet. Watch your weed pressure, keep the weeds out of your soil and fertilize approximately every three weeks, especially if you're growing in containers. I hope all of these tips give you a a good start to your onions. Okay, we are back inside. Still have our coffee. And we are going to go over the steps for the processes for the onions outside. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to create your soil. You want the right soil. You can plant your onions in ground you can plant them in raised beds, you can plant them in containers. Onions are gonna grow just about anywhere that you plant them, but they're going to do best in a loomy soil that they can grow in and that has plenty of amendments in it. They are heavy feeders and they have shallow roots. So the first thing that you wanna do is create your soil. When you create your soil for your onions, when you're first creating it, you want to put a blend of a phosphorus and a nitrogen because the phosphor phosphorus is going to help with the root production and the nitrogen is going to help with the leafy greens that help with the photosynthesis to grow the bulb when they start bulbing up. So on the website where you mainly buy your onions, if you are buying onions, is called Dixondale Farms. And I went on there to research the best fertilizers and the main thing they're talking about is doing full rows like on a farm. Uh, so their numbers are high, you have to send in a soil test, you have to get your nitrogen tested and then they give you the ratios for what you need for the nitrogen in the soil to Get an accurate count. They also recommended ammonium sulfate. So before doing all my research on exactly what I would need, um, Tom bought me some 
ammonium sulfate because that's what they said that, you know, they recommended. So I got this huge tub of ammonium sulfate. It is a natural soil fertilizer. It's like a salt. It's just like a granular salt. No, this is a big chunk, so I'll just show it to you what it looks like. Okay, so you don't wanna use a lot of this, but I would recommend that you use it um, before you plant your onion seeds, or I mean your starts or your sets, because it can burn the roots if you were to use too much of it. Okay, so you would want to add this to your uh, soil. And what this does is it controls your pH levels. Like here in Arizona, we have a very um, alkaline soil. And onions like a little bit more of an acidic soil. So I did not do this when I planted my onions. Now I am afraid to do this because I'm afraid I'll burn my roots. So what I think I'll do is just use a very small amount, like, I don't know, a quarter to a half of a teaspoon, and mix that with fish emulsion, which um, I use this right here. I also use the other fish emulsion, the Alaskan fish emulsion. Um, but this one is Evie Stone Organics Fish Emulsion with Kelp, and I will add that with a uh, half a teaspoon of this and put it in uh, my water can, and that's how I'm going to fertilize this first time. And then every three weeks, I am just going to fertilize with the fish emulsion. I can check with my pH tester what my pH levels are, and I'm going to try to keep them probably around six to 6.5 for the um, acidity in the soil because you don't want it too acid. They're not like blueberries where they just love acid and you have, it, have to have it like between a four and a five. So uh, that's what I'm going to do uh, for my fertilizer, for my onions. Another thing that you also want to add when you first start uh, your soil is your blood meal. Blood meal is a great source of nitrogen and always follow the instructions on the back for whether you're doing it in a raised bed or if you're doing it in a uh, garden, you know, an open ground garden, or if you're doing it in containers, always make sure that you read the instructions. You do not want to over fertilize because your plants, it's too much for them to uptake and it can kill them. So blood meal is a great source of nitrogen. And bone meal is a great source of phosphorus. So you put the two in there and these do not break down immediately. So they will be there for the onions to uptake throughout the growing season. You do not have to fertilize every three weeks. You can do a good amendment in your soil right at the beginning and it will probably be fine but your onions are heavy feeders, so they are going to enjoy some extra fertilizer throughout their growing seasons. Once they start bulbing up, you do not want to fertilize them at that point. Um, they should have enough amendments at that point to be able to bulb up and be just fine. Um, the other thing is when you so that's, that's your fertilizer that you want to start with. And another reason that I am fertilizing every three weeks is because I'm doing it in the containers. And when you're doing it in containers, the, your amendments are going to flush out because they're gonna run out and they're not gonna stay in the soil, they just run out of the pot. So that's another reason that I am fertilizing, just like, with I, do, like I do with my peppers. We have to fertilize more often when they're in pots because the amendments can't stay in the soil, they, they run out. So you need to give your onions a fighting chance when you grow them in containers. And then I am going to compare this year's onions and then when I do it again next season, uh, I'm gonna do it in the raised bed and see how, see how that works. So now that you've got your soil prepared, 
the next thing you need to do is make sure that you have the right onions for your zone. There is actually onion zones for planting. I did not know that when I started doing my onions. So this right here is a graph. Up on top, you can see in the green that those are long day onions. In the middle is intermediate and down towards the bottom is short day. We are in the short days and the onions that I pointed out out there, one of the mistakes that I made was I did not research my onions. The Walla Wallas and the Spanish sweets are not short day onions. So I may not get a good bulbing onion for what they need. They may need more sun than what they're gonna get. I have them in the sunniest part of my yard, so hopefully that will help. Uh, we are starting to get more daylight hours now, and um, I can see that they're starting to bulb up just a little bit. Um, but we'll have to see, you know, if that if that works. So I want to go through why these onions are in different categories for the places that you live in. So on the, excuse me, I gotta put my glasses on. On my short day onion plants, for us, our day length needs to be 10 to 12 hours. They mature in 110 days when they're planted in the south during winter, early spring. They mature in 75 days when planted in northern states in late spring, but will not get very large. They will not reach their full size potential. So basically what they're saying is you can grow an intermediate or a long day onion in a short day zone, but you're not going to get the big bulbs. Okay. So if you're in a long day state and you really want to try this intermediate or short day onion, you can, but it's likely that you're not going to get the bulb size that you were looking for. The earlier you plant your short day onions, the larger they get. Short day onions are best started suited for latitudes of 25 to 35 degrees. So this is the main thing. It's working off of your latitude. So that's on the short day is 25 to 35. Your intermediate day onions are neutral onions and they start the bulbing process when the day length reaches 12 to 14 hours. They will produce nice sized bulbs unless you live in the far south Florida or south Texas. So the further you get away from that zone, that latitude, the, sh the smaller your bulbs are going to get. They are exceptionally sweet. Intermediate day onions are best suited for latitudes of 32 to 42. So if you're here in the long day, an intermediate is right here. Anybody that's down here could try their hand at the intermediate onions. If you're a short day and you live higher up here, closer to that latitude, you could try your hand at that intermediate day onions and they'll do just fine. But if you're way down here and you're trying an intermediate onion, it's not going to bulb up the way that it needs to. Okay. And on the long day plants, they start bulbing process when the day length reaches 14 to 16 hours. These do extremely well in northern states. Sweet storage and specialty long day varieties are available. Long day onions have excellent uh, storage rates. And they are best suited for latitudes of 37 to 47. So as you can see, onions are have a lot to do with your day length and a lot to do with the, the latitude of where you're living at. So that's the, that's the first thing that you want to look at when you are doing your onions. The other thing you want to look at is what do you want? Do you want to start your onions from seeds? Do you want to get starts or do you want to get sets? Now with seeds, that's basically creating your own starts. 
And that's what I did with these here. I did not try to do it outside. I did start my onions indoors. And when you do that, you want to do it 10 to 12 weeks before your last frost date. As soon as that soil can be worked and it's about 70 degrees, you can plant your onions outside. That's the time that they like the soil. They, they like like 65, 75 or 70 degrees. And the sooner you get them in, the better chance they have of getting the bigger bulbs and they have that time to get those big bulbs before it starts getting too hot outside in your area. So I started mine indoors and then I planted them out once they were, once they were large enough. And that's called a start. So you can do your seeds, turn them into starts, and then plant them out, or you can buy sets. Now sets, I wanted to read that to you. I don't know if you can see what a set looks like. See all those little bulbs right there up on top? You get yellow, you get white, or you get red. You don't really get to pick your variety of the type of onion that you want. If you went into a big box store, you're just getting this big bag of dried out onions that you, you didn't get to pick your variety. Where if you're getting seeds or starts, you can try different varieties. Uh, like, like here, what I should have done was the yellow granix would be really good for in the, in the short days. Um, the Texas sweet is good for here. Um, when you go on to Dixondale, they have it marked out on their website. Very easy for you to follow. You, you can go by your zone and they pull up the onions that are in your zone and all the different types, uh, whether you're looking for a sweet onion or you know your basic onion, your yellow onion, your red onion, uh, whatever you're looking for. Okay, now I want to read to you what I printed out just so I am being very clear on what onion sets are. A lot of people don't recommend them because of what I would be reading to you, but other people have had great success with them. So it's just your preference and what you want to, what you want to try out. Onion sets, the pictures that I showed you, are small dry onion bulbs grown the previous season. So they're biannual. They are not allowed to mature and that's why you get these small onions and then they dry them out. If you grow your own onion sets from seed, it is not difficult, does not require much time and you can put ahead in both time and money. So if I were to go and pull my onions right now and I put them out to cure and then I stored them for the season and then went and planted them next season, those would be onion sets. So the thing is, they're already stressed out because they were pulled, they were already dried, and now they're going to be going back into your amended soil to produce the full bulb that it didn't get to produce the last season. It's said that it has more chance of not bulbing up as large as it would if you used a, just a um, start and you have a higher chance of them going to flower. I just started doing onions, so I cannot tell you one way or another. I had bought some onion sets, never used them. I just, they were just all dried out and I didn't feel comfortable using them, so I didn't do any onions that season. They say that the advantages are, and, and I can agree with this, to growing um, onion sets rather than buying sets from a nursery or a big box garden center is it gives you a wide range of varieties suited to your region. So if you're not going to a big box store, but you're going to Dixondale Farms, you can get the sets of the different varieties. But if you're going to a big box store, you're going to get a yellow onion, a red onion, or a white onion. It's not going to tell you the variety that you're planting. You're going to have no idea. But if you got the sets from, say, Dixondale, you would still be able to pick the variety that you're looking for. 
Um, they are sold in garden centers and are commonly labeled by color, but not by the variety or the day length. So you could also be getting in your box stores or nurseries an intermediate, a short day or a long day, which may not be good for your area. It saves you money if you do your own sets. They are more expensive than onion seeds, obviously. And a bag of 40 onion sets is way more expensive than a packet of 150 onion seeds. And it also allows you to choose the size of the sets you plant. You can cook out sets that will be poor growers, ensuring the crop you grow next year will be successful. And the other advantage, which is the one that I would agree with, they produce the earliest onions because they have already started. They already have a bulb going. So they're not starting from the tiny seedling and you know, the transplant. So you could plant your onion sets and then go back through and plant your starts if you did some starts and then you would have two different times where you could be harvesting your onions. So that, I might try it just for that, just because that would give me kind of like a rotational planting. So that's a, that's a good thing that I, I thought that was a good thing right there. So you're getting early summer and then the second one in the fall. So it'd be worth a try just to see what, what would happen. But a lot of people are just like against doing the sets um, because they've already been stressed and onions do not like to be stressed. So there's your three different types of onions that you want to plant. Now, once you go to start planting, whether it be from your sets or from your starts, when you plant, you only want to plant about an inch deep. So you're covering the roots and you're covering that bottom, the bottom, little bit of the bottom tip. You do not want to put that full bulb into your dirt. You do not want to fill it in all the way like that. You don't want to put it all the way up to where the stem, the bulb is totally in the dirt and just the stem is sticking out. You only want to put in the root area. You also want to make sure that when you plant, you're planting your onions six inches, four to six inches apart. It depends on the type of variety that you're planting. If you're wanting that bigger onion bulb, you want a good four to six inches apart in your soil. Because your onion needs that space to grow. There are people that do high intensity planting with their onions and they get a decent sized bulb. But if you want that really big bulb, you need to give that onion the space that it needs in order to, to produce that bulb without having to compete because onions will compete for water and nutrients. So to give them the best chance, give them the space that they need is basically what you need to do. Another thing that they say is really good is companion planting with other types of um, stuff in your garden. Onions can be planted with just about anything. They are a great companion plant in their garden. And the main thing that they are great for is bugs. They deter the bugs. Bugs do not like the smell of onions. So they'll stay more away from your plants because they don't like the smell of onions and garlic chives. Those are two of the main ones that are great for your garden because they will help deter bad bugs. So it's great to do interplanting with those with, with other crops. Just give them the space that they need, that they need and the soil that they need. Um, so you got them six inches apart and you've got the soil amended. Now you're going to let them do their thing. You're going to go out every once in a while and you're going to check on them about every three weeks. You want to do what is called spooning. You're taking that soil from around the bulb and removing it. Uh, because if your onions, say, I've got all these onions. 
we also need to do some harvesting. Because I went to the store and bought some onions because I love putting onions in my freezer so that when I'm cooking, I can go in and get an onion, get what I need for my onions. I just dropped some onion in my... I can get what I need for my onions out of the freezer and not have to take the time to stop and chop. I can just grab what I need, put it in my frying pan. I love it. Onions and green peppers, have them in your freezer. They are going, that's gonna be a time saver for you like no other. Anyway, here's an onion. I did this a couple months ago with the thought that I had time to do it. Haven't had the time and I am just making the time today. So when you're out in your garden and you've got your onions that are, the tops are growing like this, if they start bending over like this, the bulb is gonna have a hard time uptaking the nutrients that it needs. Now, if you're at the end of the season, when you're getting ready to harvest, they're going to do this. That's how you know that they're ready to be harvested. But if those bulbs haven't formed yet and they're not fully developed yet, you don't want this stem to be toppling over because then it's going to have a harder time uptaking the nutrients that it needs from, from the onion, from the roots. So what you would do is you would go and you would top it from the base of the plant up to here. You want to go about 10 to 12 inches. You don't want to cut off your whole top. You want to leave, you know, some of your green, you know, from here to probably here because it still needs that photosynthesis to help keep getting that bulb bigger. But when you're harvesting, your onion's going to tell you when it's time to harvest. These greens are going to start turning yellow. It's going to fold over. And then that's when you need to turn off your water, wait a couple of weeks, let them dry out in, in the dirt a little bit, then you have to start the curing process. And that's a whole nother thing that we need to talk about. So, but for right now, topping is another thing that you're going to want to do with your onions during the growing process. Once they have got the full size of the bulb and they are ready to be harvested, here in Arizona, it is approximately May the like end of May, um, when they start doing that, when you turn off that water and you're letting them sit there and dry, you can take the, the leaves that are on your onion and you can do this anywhere, but just lay them over your onions, you know, so that you have a less of a chance of sun scald while they are still in the ground starting to dry out. Just like you want to do that with garlic also. You want to leave them in, turn off the water, leave them in the ground for another week or so. Let them dry out a little bit before you start the curing process. Once you start the curing process, what you're going to do is you're going to pull those onions out of the ground. Now, when you're pulling those onions from that stem, if your stem is trying to break, get a, get a fork, uh, uh, like a little pitchfork or a dig, some kind of digging tool. Dig down under where those roots are and pull it up that way. So then you're digging down and pulling up. Okay, you're not, you're not, you know, chopping into it. You're just getting under the root system and pulling up. It should make it easier for you to pull out. Once you do that, you wanna shake them off a little bit, you know, brush them off maybe, you know, like, you know, just brush them off. Don't, don't run them underwater. Then you're going to put them on some kind of a rack, some kind of a drying rack. Here in Arizona, it is too hot at that point for us to leave them outside to dry. They, they would burn up. So we would have to put them on, you know, like I could put them on my seed tray racks or I could put them in a tray like this. You want to put them single file. So you'd want to put one here, one here. You don't want to stack them on top of each other. You do not want to cut the stems or the roots. At this point you're just gonna put the whole onion on here and let it dry for several weeks you know when it's dry when your outer layer is paper gets papery and it's thin and the tops 
have completely dried out and they're not, they don't have any moisture in them. That's when you can store them. Now this can take, you know, three weeks. So, and if it takes a little more, it takes a little more. You do not want to store an onion that is not completely dried out. At that point, you're going to take your onion, and this is a good example here. So here's an onion that, here's the root. So that root would have been a lot longer. You're going to cut it to about this length, where it's about, about an inch to an inch and a half. You're going to take the top and cut all of that stem off, except for a quarter to one inch of stem. And then there's different ways that you can store them. You do not just want to throw them into some kind of a container and have them sitting on top of each other. They need airflow or you're going to get a rotting onion. So one of the things that you can get is a mesh bag. I got these from Amazon and I was using them as hammocks for my melons outside, but you can also use them to store onions. You would put them in here. Oops. And you can put, you know, just kind of um, stack them in here, not right on top of each other because this does spread out, they, it widens out. So you can put one here, put one here, then put one center, then two, then one, then two, then one, and all the way up to the top, okay? You wanna keep an eye on your onions. If you start feeling, you know, go in there, you wanna keep them in a uh, cool, dry place that's preferably dark. So a storage closet would be a great area to, to hang these. You could put a little hanger on the wall and just hang them in there. Um, keep an eye on them though. Go in there when you're when you're getting an onion out or whatever and check them because if you get one onion that starts going soft and getting bad it can destroy the whole bag and you don't want that um, you went through a lot of work to harvest these onions and to grow these onions you don't want them to go to waste another way that you can store your onion take this guy out of here and it's a cheaper way for you to do it. <laughs> this one's funny. Is get some pantyhose. So I have some old pantyhose here and I can cut off the top. All right, and then I can put my onion in my hose. Push it all the way down to the end and then tie that one. Then put your next onion in, tie it, next onion, tie it. That way there is definitely a space in between your onions. I feel like I will be doing this instead of the mesh bags because in the mesh bags, they're still kind of touching each other. In this one, they're not because you got that knot in between the two of them. Now, or between each one of them. So say you want to use your onion. You would take and cut that off right there. Okay, so let's put another onion in here first. I should have done that first. I want to find one that doesn't have a stem on it. But I don't think that's going to happen because they all need to be cut. Okay, so let's put this guy in here. Okay, and then we're going to tie this up. Obviously, you wouldn't want to store an onion that has a stem. I'm lucky they haven't gone soft yet. Okay, so here I have two onions and I wanna use this bottom onion. So I'm going to cut this onion right here and then I still have my knot on this one. Okay, so that's how you can use your, use your onions and I mean you can store a lot of onions in these things. And then here you have this one that you, that you took out. So this is a great way to store your onions for, for however long you can store them for. Now, when you're harvesting your onions, if you have some onions that have bolted, which means 
that onion sent up a stem out of the middle of your onion and it produced a flower at the top. You want to, before that, before that opens, it kind of looks like a garlic scape when it first starts. And before that opens, you want to harvest that onion. Even if none of your other onions are ready or whatever, before it actually flowers, you want to harvest it. Once it goes to flower, you don't have that much of a shelf life on it for one. You're not going to anyway. If, if that onion is flowering and no matter what, when you're doing your onions, you're going to have some that go to flower. Even if you did everything perfect, you're more than likely still going to have some onions that go to flower. You want to use those onions first. They are not going to have a long shelf life. They are not going to be shelf stable. They will rot on you if you store them with your other onions just because they, they didn't fully develop. So use those first and then store your other onions. Your sweet onions last three to four months on average and your yellow onions and your more pungent onions are going to last longer. There's something in the, the smell, the strength of the onion that actually will help the onion to store longer. So that's, that's another sign of how long your onions um, are going to store and how well they're going to store. And another fun fact for the onions is when you have your green stalks on there, they say the number of stems that you have coming out of your onion is also going to be the number of rings that are inside your onion. So it can time, it kind of is a telltale on how big your onions are going to be once they start bulbing up and you have all that green coming out. So I hope this video has helped you with your onions and hopefully it gives you more success than I have a feeling I'm going to have this year. But next year, it's a learning process and I hope that I have saved you from a little bit of the heartache that I have a feeling I'm going to be dealing with. But we'll have to see. You know, it, it, it just might surprise me and I, I might get a good harvest. But no matter what, even if I don't, I'm still going to have little salad onions if, if I don't. So I'm still going to come out with something. I'm hoping for the big ones, but... I bought the wrong onions for my zone, so we'll have to see what happens.